Hi, this is Richard from the OPA Hub website with the second in our series of What's New in the August 2017 release of Oracle Policy Automation. I'll be honest and tell you that this video isn't so much about what's completely new in the sense that uh, REST API already existed, but it's an opportunity to give you some examples of useful things you can do with the OPA deployment REST API. As you can see from the application in front of you, I'm using the August 2017 release, and I have one deployment. It's all I need for this particular demonstration. This is the name of the deployment. I have a little Visual Basic application here to demonstrate four steps in the use of the Oracle Policy Automation Deployment REST API. The first one is really simple, that when you need to, you can simply extract version information from your site. And for our first demonstration, I've simply dumped it into a text box. So it's about as useful as a text box. The second example is when you need to have a list of the available endpoints. So here I have a list of the different endpoints. So I can look for users, I can deal with a specific deployment, and the URLs are here. Fine. We'll go and look at both of those in just a second. But the third and fourth items are probably the most useful of this little demonstration. In most cases, your OPA hub will not allow you to access the REST API without the necessary authorization using OAuth 2.0. So we would need to provide necessary username and password for an integration user of our OPA hub and retrieve the authorization access token. Once we have this access token, we are required to include it in our future calls so that we are seen to be authorized. Switching to SOAP UI, let's take a look at those two last buttons seen from a simple call perspective. So here's the first call to the authorization request with a client ID, which is my username, and my client secret, which is the password, and grant type. I wish to be granted client credential credentials. It's a post, and the media type is application JSON. And I'll run it and switch into something that's a little more visible, JSON. And you'll see that I have received an access token, which expires in a certain number of seconds. Now that I have this access token, future calls, for example, to a requirement to see a snapshot of a particular deployment, will require me to provide this access token in order to be able to make the call. And in this case, I'm asking for a snapshot I'm going to run this, and you'll see that I have the details of a snapshot, including in base64 the zip file of my deployment. So the questions that we're going to ask ourselves now is, how do we get from obtaining an access code to then implementing it so that we are able to programmatically make a call, include the code, and retrieve the zip file 
but not as a base64, but actually as a zip file. So, of course, here's the sort of the caveat is I'm absolutely not a professional Visual Basic programmer at all, and you'll see why I'm saying that in just a minute. And also, it is 2300, so it's 11 p.m. in the evening, and I've just done this because I fancy a challenge and because it's the kind of thing that makes me happy to be part of a community because I know that if I share it, other people will improve it and make it better. So let's switch over to Visual Basic for a moment. We'll take a look, first of all, at how to get the credentials. So the credentials are built out of, as you'd expect, a base URL plus a concatenation of the different components, the client ID, the client secret, and so on. The content type is set to JSON because that's what we're going to get back. We actually set the content to zero, and then we ask for a web response to get the response. We read the response and we use the access token key to grab it and pass back the access token. So that in itself is fairly straightforward, but it took me about three quarters of an hour to work out how to do it. The second one, which we'll scroll by, is the how to get a deployment as a zip file. So in this case, once again, we concatenate a URL which includes the name of a deployment. So we're going to ask the user what's the deployment you want to go and get. There's absolutely no error checking and the same is true for all the other dialogues. We don't check to see if what you've typed in makes any sense. Because we need to add a accept header, the web request I used in the previous function has been passed to an HTTP web request which allows us to do this part. And we make sure that we have the authorization header added, which is bearer followed by a space, followed by the authorization code that we receive from the get credential function. The next bit is fairly standard. However, this time round, because we're not interested in a string, we're going to take the output and convert it to a memory stream, pull the bytes of the memory stream, and then convert it into, from a memory stream into a file stream. This folder has to exist, but we'll use the name of the deployment you gave us, plus .zip, and we'll create a new file. Let's put it to the test. There is nothing in the temp folder. I'm going to ask to download a zip, and this is the name of my one and only deployment on my OPA hub website. I'll still go through the same basic information of what's the root URL, what's the username for the integration user, and what's the password. I get a message saying the file has been downloaded. And here in my temp folder, I have my zip file. And when I open up the zip file, I can see that it is a standard OPA zip file. So I'm able to retrieve things programmatically from the OPA hub. Well, uh, I'm pleased with myself. It's time for my bed, but I hope this will prove useful for some of you. And anyone who's interested in retrieving the very ugly and very approximate code that I wrote, just drop me a line in the comments and I'll be happy to share it with you. No warranty or worthiness implied. See you next time on the OPA hub website.